In this video we're going to take the model that we assembled in a previous session and we're going to look at applying some toolpaths to create the sign that you can see here. So let's just go to file, we'll just close this down and then we'll go and open an existing file. So from the Lotus Cottage project folder let's open up Lotus Cottage model and we'll press open. And if we go into the 2D view control, we're going to tile our windows vertically so we can see the 2D view on the left and the 3D view on the right hand side. So this is the uh, complete model that we assembled in a previous session where we looked at bringing in three pieces of clip art and we laid them out and then we altered the heights to create the finished plaque that you can see here. We then looked at creating some text which we'll look at v-carving later on in this session. Now before we go and create the toolpaths, uh, there's two things that I need to do. One is to create a vector boundary around the entire part of my model. And the second is just to check the heights. So I'm going to select the Lotus Flourish. I'm going to hold down Shift to select the Flourish. And still holding down Shift, I'm going to select that panel. We're going to come into the Modeling tab. And then we're going to use this option here to create a vector boundary from selected components. And then if I just click in the white space, we can see that that's created a vector that goes around the entire model. Let's come over here into the 3D model tools and we're going to use the option to scale Z height of model. And we can see that the current height is just under half an inch. So I'm just going to put in an exact height and just round that up to exactly half an inch and then we'll press apply. And we can close that down and then we can OK the scale model height form. OK, so now that we've got our vector boundary, we've scaled the whole model, we can now go and switch over to the toolpaths tab. So let's go into the drawing tab and then we'll use this option here to switch over to the toolpaths tab. And the first thing we need to do is set up our materials. So let's go over to Material Setup. And so we're going to set up our material exactly how we will on the machine. So for the Z0, we're going to set that off the top of the block. The material thickness that we're working with is 3 quarters of an inch. My XY position is going to be in the lower left hand corner. The model position in material, I'm just going to have a small gap above the model of 0 0.05 just so that we avoid any flat spots. And so we can see that my model thickness is half an inch and so I'm going to have a gap below of stock material here of 0.2 inches. Then I'm going to check the other settings and if you plan to actually machine the example shown in this tutorial then it's very important that you calculate all the toolpaths using parameters and settings that are safe and appropriate for your particular machine, the tooling that you have available and the material that you are using. And so once we're happy with this setup form we can then go and press OK. So now we're ready to go and create our first toolpath. The first toolpath we're going to create is a 3D roofing toolpath. And what that does, it allows us to hog out a majority of the material using a larger tool, so it makes it safer for us to go in at the detailed areas using a smaller tool for the finished toolpath. So let's go and select the boundary vector. We're going to come over and use the 3D roofing toolpath. So the first thing that we need to do is assign a tool. So if I press select, that will open up my tool database in which I can go and select a tool that I'd like to use. In this case, I'd like to use the quarter inch end mill. Okay, I could just check the settings in here and then go ahead and press OK. If I wanted to alter the settings for this particular toolpath alone without affecting the tool database, then I could go and use the edit option and make the changes in here. It will just make the changes to this toolpath only. I'm happy with the settings that we've got, so we're going to press OK. We then move on to the machine limit boundary. And as we have a vector, I'm going to use a selected vector option. For the boundary offset, I'm going to put in a value of a quarter of an inch. That's quite large, so what that means, it just means that the tool is going to come past the vector by a quarter of an inch, and this will ensure that it will come past uh, the part and cut down the sides of our model. Okay, so we'll just go the quarter of an inch in that case. 
Then we move on to the machining allowance. And so this is a piece of virtual skin that we can apply to the roughing toolpath and it just helps us minimise the roughing pass chipping at the finished surface. So we're just going to put in a value of 0 0.03 in there. We then move on to the roughing strategy. For this I'm going to apply a Z-level strategy and so that's going to do 2D machining around the model and I'm going to raster that in the Y and so the reason for that is that my material block is set up on my machine where the grain is parallel to the Y axis so I'm going to raster along Y. We're going to call that 3D roughing and then we could go ahead and press calculate. So we can see there we've got these blue lines that represent that toolpath and we've automatically opened up the preview toolpath form. So now I can go ahead and preview that toolpath so we can get more of a feel of how that will look once that's been machined. Okay, so you can take a look at that. So you can see it's hogged out quite a lot of material there. So now we're ready to go on and create our finishing toolpath. So let's just close that down. So for the finishing pass, I only really want to look at machining all of the detailed areas. And so this panel area here, I can get away with doing that faster using a pocketing toolpath. So what I need to do is create an extra vector that's going to represent this flat area of the panel in order for me to limit my finishing toolpath to just the detailed areas only. So let's go over and switch over to the drawing tab. And then we'll go and select the panel and use this option here to trace bitmap. So in this case we're going to go with colour and the colours that I'd like to fit vectors to is the lightest colour. So that represents the highest area in that component which is the top of the panel. So you can see that's changed to red in the 2D view. And we'll just go to some of these settings here and press preview. We can see that's created that vector of our panel, the top area of the flat bit of the panel. Then we can go ahead and press apply and we'll close that down. Okay, so we've got the bottom area of our panel. I just need a vector that represents the bottom of this flourish now. So I'm going to take that flourish, I'm going to go into the modeling tab, and we're going to use this option here to create a vector boundary from selected components. So now we have two vectors here. So I'm going to hold down shift and select those. I'm going to go into the drawing tab and I'm going to use this option here to subtract vectors. Okay, so you can see it's subtracted those. If I hold down shift and select the vector that I want, so it's deselected, and then the ones that are uh, selected now, I can just press delete on the keyboard and that will delete them. So now I have an area that represents uh, my panel area and now holding down shift if I select the other vector I have a machine boundary just for the finished pass. So now I can go and switch back over to the toolpaths tab. And so then we'll go and create our 3D finishing toolpath. So first we need to select a tool. You can see that we've currently got an 8th inch ball nose selected and that's the tool I'd actually like to use in this case. So rather than going to select, I'm going to use the edit option just to check some of the parameters for this particular toolpath. Okay, so let's just check the step over here. So that's the distance between each pass. So the smaller the step over, the better finish that you'll have. But it will take longer to cut. A good step over will be somewhere between 8 and 10%. So I'm happy with that being at 8% there. And then go ahead and press OK here. For the machine limit boundary, again, I'm going to use that selected vector. And I'm going to put in a boundary offset of 0.1 inches, as I don't need to come as far past the edge this time. Area machine strategy, again we're going to raster that and I'm going to put in a raster of 90 degrees and that means that the passes will be parallel to the Y axis to match the direction of the grain of my physical piece of wood. If you wanted the passes parallel to the X axis then you'd enter a value of 0 in here. I'm going to call this 3D finish and then we'll press calculate and so we can see this blue area represents our toolpath and if we go ahead and preview that toolpath you can see that we're going to get an accurate representation of how that will look on our machine.
If you wasn't happy with the amount of detail that was picked up in this case, then it'd be a good idea to use the last option and go back into your 3D finishing toolpath and alter the tool to use a smaller tool. Okay, so I'm happy with that, so now I need to think about this area here on top of the panel that we'll look at pocketing out. I'm just going to hover over the top area of our panel, around this area here, and if we take a look at the Z values that are showing at the bottom of our screen here when I hover over that panel, we can see it's somewhere between 0.3959 and 0 0.3960. So I'm going to remember that 0 0.3960 value um, because that's the amount I'd like to cut down into when we run our pocketing toolpath. So let's just close that preview down. We'll put that back in Z. Then I'm going to come over to the 2D view, hold down Shift and just deselect that outer vector. We only want this vector here that represents the flat panel area. So with that vector selected, let's go over to the toolpath operations and we're going to use the pocketing toolpath. So we're going to put in a start depth of 0. The cut depth, remember we said that value of point 3960, so that's how much we're going to cut down into our material. Then for the tool we're going to use a quarter inch end mill in this case. You can see that's going to do that in four passes, so I'm just going to use the edit passes option. as I think we can get away with doing that in just two passes, so I'm just going to reduce that down to two passes in there and press OK. I'm going to move on to clear pocket Again, we're going to use the raster option and I'm going to put in a raster angle of 90 degrees and that's again so that, that cuts parallel to the y-axis and then I'm also going to include a pocket allowance so when we created that finishing toolpath we applied a 0.1 boundary offset to ensure that the tool would roll past the side of the part and so we saw in the preview that it cut 0.1 inches into this panel area. So I'm going to put in a small allowance of 0.05 so that we don't cut it into the detailed areas. Let's so put 0.05 in there. We're going to call this pocket. We'll press calculate here. We can see that preview in there. And let's just preview that toolpath. And we can take a look at that. See that's cleared that panel so we have a nice uh, flat top on here. So I'm happy with that, so let's just close that down. So the next toolpath I need to create is going to be the V carving for the Lotus Cottage text. So I'm going to select the text, then we're going to come over to the toolpath operations, we're going to use the V carving engraving toolpath. So we start off by looking at the cutting depths. Now we know that we've pocketed down 0 0.3960, so I'm going to put that value in there. The tool that I'd like to use, I'll press select to open up the tool database, and it's this one here, the 60 degree quarter inch. We could check some of the settings in here, and I'm happy to go with those, so I'll go ahead and press OK. We'll come down, I'm just going to call that VCarve, we'll press calculate, and let's preview that toolpath. If I maximise the 3D view, we can see that's not too bad. If I wanted to, I could help visualise how I'd like to finish this a little better by selecting a colour for that toolpath, as ultimately I'd like to paint my text black and so we can see how that would look. So I'm happy with that. Let's put that back in Z, close down that preview form. Let's go to View. We're going to tile our windows vertically. And so now we're ready to go and run our cutout toolpath. So I'm going to select the outer vector that represents the boundary of my model, the one that we created at the start, and then we're going to come over to the toolpath operations and use the profile toolpath option. So for the cut depth, we're going to cut all the way through the material. We know that our material thickness is three quarters of an inch. If for some reason I forgot what I set that to, then I could press Z equals and it will automatically fill that value in there to the thickness of material that I put in on material setup. We can then move down to the tool. So in this case I'd like to use a quarter inch end mill, so we're going to use the select option here. I'm going to go into my end mill section, select the quarter inch here, check some of the parameters and press OK. 
Okay, so you can see it's going to do that in six passes. If we just go on to edit, I'm just going to edit this specific toolpath. I'm just going to alter the pass step in this case and make that a quarter of an inch and press OK. So now that will cut that out in three passes. We're going to machine vectors outside of the vector. And then in this case, I'd like to add tabs to my toolpath. So I'm going to check this option here. And then we can specify the length of the tab along with the thickness. So I'm happy with a quarter inch length and a thickness of 0.15. So then I'm going to use the option here to edit tabs. Okay, so this is where you start to insert your tab. So I'm going to go to the constant number of six. So let's just say add tabs and it will automatically put those in place. If I didn't like where they were positioned, I can just select the tab and move that along the vector to a place where I like where that should go. Or I could click on a tab to delete it and then click on the vector to insert a new tab and move that if I wanted to. I could move this one up here, click to have one there, delete that one, delete that one and then click to put one in position there. So I'm happy with those tabs where they are, so we'll close that down. And then we can move down, we'll call that one Profile. Let's calculate that. And so let's preview that toolpath. Okay, so it's not so bad. Let's just maximise the 3D view. And if we just take a look at that, you can see there's areas such as this area here where the tool is a little bit too big to get in. So I could go back and use a smaller tool if I wanted to. So let's try that. So we'll undo last. Let's go back into the profile toolpath. Then we're going to go into the tool option and select a tool here. So if we look at our end mills, we can see the smallest one that we have is a quarter of an inch. So I'm going to select that. So what I need to do is make a new tool. So I'm just actually going to copy this tool. So if that's selected, let's use the copy option. Then I'm going to select the first one here. And I'm just going to alter that to make that an eighth of an inch this time. Okay, so I'm going to change the value there. And then I must remember to change the diameter in this section here. So once we've put that in, we'll update everything and then I can go ahead with the settings and press OK. And then let's come down here and press calculate. And let's just preview that. We can see now that it's got in that gap a little bit better. So I'm happy with that. And so that really completes this tutorial where we've looked at taking in a model that we assembled in a previous session. We've created some vectors and applied some toolpaths so it's ready to go and cut on a CNC machine. So let's just close this down and then we'll go ahead and save this file. So we'll go to File, Save As and in the Project folder we're going to call that Lotus Cottage Toolpath and press Save then you can access that from the project folder.